Have you ever felt a distance between yourself and God? The Bible tells us that sin created this separation, breaking the perfect communion that existed in the Garden of Eden. But it also offers hope, a bridge across that chasm in the form of mediators chosen by God to bring us back to himself. While the Old Testament speaks of mediators like Moses, who delivered God's law to the people, we're going to focus on the two pivotal mediators revealed in Scripture, Jesus, the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit, the Shekinah glory. These two figures, divine yet distinct, work in perfect harmony to mend the broken relationship between humanity and God. Through their intertwined roles, we gain access to the Father, not through our own merit, but through the sacrifice of one and the indwelling power of the other. In the very beginning, God created mankind in his own image, male and female, reflecting his divine nature. This image wasn't just physical, it encompassed their very being, their capacity for love, creativity, and most importantly, their ability to commune directly with their creator. This perfect communion was shattered by sin, creating a barrier between God and humanity. Yet, even in their fallen state, God's love remained. He longed for that broken fellowship to be restored. Throughout the Old Testament, we see glimpses of this mediation foreshadowing the ultimate sacrifice that would one day reconcile humanity to God. From the very moment sin entered the world, God set in motion a plan of redemption, a covenant of restoration. He promised a seed who would crush the head of the serpent, ultimately conquering sin and its consequences. This promise was a beacon of hope, a testament to God's unwavering faithfulness. Each covenant, each promise pointed forward to a future time when God's plan of redemption would be fully realized. These Old Testament accounts were prophetic glimpses into the very heart of God, revealing his deep love for his creation and his unwavering commitment to restoring what was lost. In the tapestry of Christian theology, Jesus stands as the preeminent mediator between God and humanity. His role is not merely that of an intermediary, but as a bridge over the chasm caused by sin. Jesus' mediation is anchored in his dual nature as fully divine and fully human, allowing him to empathize with our weaknesses and yet possess the authority to stand before God on our behalf. His death on the cross, a pivotal act of mediation, reconciles a holy God and a sinful mankind, restoring the relationship that was fractured in Eden. Through him, the promise of new life and direct access to the Father is made possible. The New Testament is filled with references that establish and clarify the mediating role of Jesus. Hebrews 9.15 describes him as the mediator of a new covenant through which those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The Gospels provide numerous accounts of Jesus' life and teachings which exemplify his role as mediator. Romans 5, 8 to 10 expounds on how God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us and through his death we are reconciled to God. Each verse that speaks of Christ's sacrifice and intercessory role fortifies the believer's understanding and appreciation of his central role in our salvation. The reconciliation brought about by Jesus' mediation is both profound and transformative. By his sacrifice, Jesus not only restored our relationship with God, but also provided a model for reconciliation among ourselves. Believers are called to be ambassadors of this reconciliation, spreading the message of peace and unity that Jesus' sacrifice made possible. The church, as the body of Christ, is to mirror the unity and love that defines the relationship between the Father and the Son. The hope of this eternal union motivates believers to live lives that are pleasing to God, reflecting the sacrificial love and mediation of Jesus. While Jesus' role as mediator is widely recognized, the Holy Spirit's equal importance in this divine dance of redemption is often overlooked. Just as Jesus is the bridge, the Holy Spirit is the living water that flows across it, bringing life and renewal to all who thirst for God. The Spirit empowers us to grasp the depths of God's love revealed through Christ and to live in the reality of that love daily. 
From the creation story in Genesis to the prophets who spoke God's word with boldness, the Holy Spirit has always been present, preparing the way for the Messiah's coming. And just as Jesus promised, the Spirit was poured out in fullness at Pentecost, empowering the early church to carry the message of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit's work as mediator is woven throughout the fabric of Scripture from Genesis to Revelation. In the Old Testament, we see her empowering individuals like Samson with supernatural strength, giving wisdom to artisans who crafted the tabernacle and inspiring prophets like Isaiah to declare God's heart to a wayward nation. With Jesus' arrival, the Spirit's work took on a new dimension, empowering his ministry and guiding him in his choice of disciples. Pentecost was the culmination of centuries of preparation, the Spirit being poured out in fullness to empower the church to become the body of Christ on earth. This outpouring continues today, enabling believers to live lives marked by love, power, and a deep awareness of God's presence. The Holy Spirit's mediating work isn't confined to the pages of Scripture. It's a vibrant reality available to every believer today. Just as Jesus promised, the Spirit dwells within us, guiding, comforting, convicting, and empowering us to live lives that reflect God's character. Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23 beautifully describes the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The Spirit's work goes beyond inward transformation. It empowers us to be Christ's ambassadors in the world. It's through the Spirit's guidance that we learn to pray effectively, to discern God's will, and to stand firm against the enemy's attacks. To truly grasp the magnificence of God's plan for our salvation, we must see beyond the individual roles of Jesus and the Holy Spirit and recognize their exquisite interdependence. Consider Jesus' own words, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit's mission is to illuminate the truth about Jesus, to make his glory known and to empower us to live in the reality of his victory over sin and death. When we open our hearts to Jesus as Lord, the Holy Spirit takes up residence within us, making his presence known through love, peace, joy, and a deep yearning for holiness. It's through this indwelling presence that we experience the transformative power of the cross and are empowered to live lives worthy of our calling. Section 2. The Spirit's Testimony, Revealing Jesus to the World The Holy Spirit's role isn't limited to guiding individual believers. She is also actively working to draw all people to Jesus. Just as John the Baptist came as a forerunner, preparing the way for Jesus' earthly ministry, so too does the Spirit go before us, opening hearts and minds to the truth of the gospel. She whispers his name in the silence of a searching heart, nudges us with a sense of conviction, and fans the flames of faith ignited by his word. This work of the Spirit is beautifully illustrated in the book of Acts, where we see her empowering the disciples to boldly proclaim the message of salvation. It was the Spirit who filled them with courage to speak truth to power, even in the face of persecution. And it was the Spirit who worked through their words, bringing conviction and leading many to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. This same Spirit is at work in the world today, drawing people to Jesus through a variety of means. She might use a song, a sermon, a conversation, or even a difficult life experience to open our eyes to our need for a Savior. She speaks to us in a language we can understand, meeting us where we are, and gently leading us toward the one who offers true hope and freedom. The Spirit's testimony about Jesus isn't confined to words. It's often most powerfully revealed through the transformed lives of believers. When we allow the Spirit to work in and through us, producing her fruit in our lives, we become living, breathing testaments to the power of the gospel. Our love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control become irresistible invitations to a world searching for meaning and purpose. Section 3. Living in the Spirit, Walking with Jesus A Unified Experience The Christian life isn't about choosing between Jesus and the Holy Spirit, it's about embracing the fullness of their intertwined work in our lives. 
It's about surrendering to the Spirit's guidance as we seek to follow in Jesus' footsteps. It's about allowing His love to flow through us, transforming us from the inside out, and empowering us to be His hands and feet in the world. This journey of faith is an ongoing process of learning to walk in step with the Spirit. It's about becoming sensitive to her promptings, discerning His voice amidst the clamor of competing voices and yielding to His leading even when it challenges our preconceived notions or takes us outside our comfort zones. Romans 8, 14 beautifully captures this reality. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. It's the Spirit who assures us of our adoption into God's family who empowers us to live out our new identity as His beloved children. And it's through this intimate relationship with the Spirit that we grow in our understanding of Jesus, His character, and His will for our lives. This life of walking in the Spirit isn't a passive existence. It's an active pursuit of righteousness fueled by God's grace. It's about allowing the Spirit to empower us to resist temptation, to overcome sin, and to live lives marked by holiness and love. And it's about partnering with her to share the good news of Jesus Christ with a world hungry for hope and healing. As we yield to the Spirit's leading, we'll discover a depth of joy, peace, and purpose we never thought possible. We'll find ourselves caught up in the magnificent dance of redemption, our lives interwoven with the very fabric of God's love and will experience the incredible privilege of joining him in his mission to restore all things, bringing heaven to earth, one act of love at a time. Section 1. Echoes of Eden, Fulfilling Ancient Prophecies Throughout the Old Testament, God wove a tapestry of promises, prophecies pointing towards a time when the brokenness of this world would be healed and humanity would once again walk in intimate fellowship with their Creator. These weren't merely wishful predictions, but divinely inspired glimpses into the very heart of God, revealing His unwavering commitment to making all things new. The mediating work of Jesus and the Holy Spirit stands as the ultimate fulfillment of these ancient prophecies. Isaiah spoke of a suffering servant who would bear our griefs and carry our sorrows. Isaiah 53, 4. This prophecy found its perfect fulfillment in Jesus, who willingly took upon himself the sins of the world, offering his life as a ransom for many. But the restoration promised in Scripture goes beyond individual salvation. It encompasses the renewal of all creation. The prophet Joel spoke of a time when God would pour out his Spirit on all flesh. Joel 2 verses 28 and 29. This prophecy found its initial fulfillment at Pentecost, but it also points towards a future outpouring of the Spirit, a time when God's glory will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk 2, 14. The book of Revelation offers a glimpse of this glorious future, describing a new heaven and a new earth where God's presence dwells eternally with His people. Revelation 21, verses 1 to 4. It's a picture of complete restoration where sin and death are no more and the echoes of Eden resound throughout eternity. Section 2, The Two Witnesses Restoring God's Image in Humanity The dual mediation of Jesus and the Holy Spirit isn't simply about bridging the gap between God and humanity. It's about restoring the image of God within us, enabling us to reflect His character to a broken and hurting world. When God created humanity, He declared that it was very good, Genesis 1. 31. This goodness wasn't just about their moral uprightness, it was about their capacity to reflect His love, creativity, and relational nature. Sin marred that image, but through Christ's sacrifice and the Spirit's empowering presence, we are being renewed, transformed into the likeness of Jesus Himself. This process of transformation isn't passive, it requires our active participation. As we surrender to the Spirit's leading, allowing her to shape our thoughts, desires, and actions, we become more like Christ, reflecting His love, compassion, and grace to those around us. We become living proof of God's redemptive power, walking testimonies to the truth and beauty of the gospel. This restoration of God's image within us has profound implications for how we live in the world. We are called to be agents of reconciliation bridge builders in a world fractured by division, hatred, and injustice. We are to be peacemakers, reflecting God's heart for unity and wholeness in our families, communities, and nations. And as we partner with the Spirit in this work of restoration, we'll discover that we are not alone. 
Just as Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to empower his disciples, so too does he equip and empower us today to be his witnesses, his ambassadors of grace and truth in a world desperately in need of his love. Section 3. Our Response Living as Witnesses of Reconciliation Understanding the dual mediation of Jesus and the Holy Spirit should evoke more than just intellectual assent. It should ignite within us a passionate response, a desire to live lives that reflect the transformative power of this divine partnership. We are called to be more than just admirers of God's grace. We are invited to be active participants in His ongoing work of redemption. So how do we respond to this incredible gift of mediation? First and foremost, we must surrender our lives to Jesus Christ, acknowledging Him as Lord and Savior. It's through this act of surrender that we receive the Holy Spirit who empowers us to live out our new identity as children of God. We are then called to cultivate an intimate relationship with the Spirit, seeking her guidance through prayer, scripture reading, and fellowship with other believers. As we grow in our understanding of God's love and grace, we'll find ourselves compelled to share this good news with others. The Spirit will empower us to be bold witnesses, sharing the message of hope and reconciliation with a world longing for meaning and purpose. We'll discover that our lives become love letters written not with ink, but with acts of kindness, compassion, and forgiveness. This life of faith isn't always easy. There will be challenges, setbacks, and times when we feel inadequate for the task. But we can take heart in knowing that we are not alone. Jesus, our ever-present mediator, intercedes for us before the Father, and the Holy Spirit empowers us to persevere, to stand firm in our faith, and to continue reflecting God's glory to a world in need of His light. Section 1, The Tapestry of Redemption, Woven Together by Grace As we've journeyed through Scripture, exploring the profound roles of Jesus and the Holy Spirit as our mediators, We've uncovered a truth that's both awe-inspiring and deeply personal. God, in His infinite love, has meticulously orchestrated a plan to redeem and restore humanity, weaving together a tapestry of grace that spans from eternity past to eternity future. Each thread, meticulously placed, speaks to His unwavering commitment to bring us back into intimate fellowship with Himself. We've seen how Jesus, the Son of God, willingly embraced the role of the suffering servant bridging the insurmountable chasm between a holy God and a sinful humanity through his sacrificial death on the cross. He became the ultimate mediator, the bridge over which God's love and forgiveness could flow freely to all who believe. Yet this bridge wouldn't be a static structure, but a living, breathing conduit of grace empowered by the very presence of God himself, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Shekinah glory, emerges from Scripture not as a shadowy figure, but as a distinct person of the Godhead, actively involved in every aspect of our redemption. From the very beginning, she hovered over creation, bringing order out of chaos and breathing life into being. Throughout the Old Testament, we witnessed her empowering individuals, guiding nations, and preparing the way for the Messiah's arrival. And with Jesus' ascension to the Father, the Holy Spirit was poured out in fullness, equipping and empowering the early church to carry the message of salvation to the ends of the earth. This same Spirit continues to work in and through believers today, guiding us into all truth, revealing Jesus to the world, and transforming us into His image. Section 2. Embracing the Gift living in the fullness of mediation. The dual mediation of Jesus and the Holy Spirit isn't just a theological concept to be studied. It's an invitation to experience the fullness of God's love and grace in our daily lives. It's about embracing the reality that we don't have to navigate this life on our own strength, relying on our own limited understanding or flawed efforts. We have been given an incredible gift, two divine advocates who long to guide, empower, and strengthen us every step of the way. To fully embrace this gift, we must first cultivate an intimate relationship with both Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We do this through prayer, spending time in God's Word, and seeking fellowship with other believers. As we draw closer to Jesus, allowing His love to permeate every aspect of our being, the Holy Spirit will fill us with Her presence, guiding our thoughts, desires, and actions. We must also be willing to surrender our lives to the Spirit's leading, even when it challenges our preconceived notions 
or leads us down paths we wouldn't naturally choose. It's in those moments of surrender, those acts of obedience, that we experience the transformative power of God's grace most profoundly. It's in those moments that we discover the truth of Jesus' words, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it, Matthew 16, 25. Living in the fullness of mediation means allowing the love of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit to flow through us like rivers of living water, refreshing our souls and impacting the world around us. It means becoming vessels of His grace, reflecting His light into the darkest corners of our world. Section 3, A Journey of Transformation, Becoming Agents of Reconciliation The ultimate goal of Jesus and the Holy Spirit's mediating work is not simply to get us to heaven, but to transform us into the image of Christ, making us agents of reconciliation in a world fractured by sin and division. As we allow the Spirit to work in and through us, chipping away at our rough edges and conforming us more and more to the likeness of Jesus, we become living embodiments of God's love, grace, and redemptive power. This transformation isn't a one-time event, but an ongoing journey, a lifelong pursuit of holiness and wholeness. There will be times when we stumble and fall, when we allow sin to creep back into our lives and dim our light. But even in those moments, we can take heart knowing that we serve a God who is always ready to forgive, to heal, and to make us new. His love for us is relentless, and His grace is sufficient for every need. As we walk this journey of transformation, our lives become love letters to a hurting world written not with ink, but with acts of kindness, compassion, and forgiveness. We become bridge builders reaching across divides of race, religion, and ideology, demonstrating the unifying power of God's love. We become peacemakers, reflecting His heart for justice and righteousness in our communities and nations. And as we partner with the Holy Spirit in this work of reconciliation, will discover the truth of Jesus' words, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. We'll find a peace that surpasses all understanding, a peace that empowers us to face the challenges of this life with courage, hope, and an unshakable trust in the one who holds our future in his hands.